Isn't too cool. Daniel, how do you feel for your first time getting on an airplane? Scared. Scared? Oh my god. Yeah. First time on an airplane, dude. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I hope y'all enjoy it. First stop, I'm about to go to Dallas. Guys, I take off to Royal Tent Honduras this time. Yeah, right. Coming this time. Get out of the way. I don't know what that was, but I mean, I guess that's just what happens when you're, you're that excited to go to Royal Tent. I like my hair. I don't wait to roll it there, but I got a swing. Of course, it's a good few hours. Do y'all know it? I'm Jacob Lauren. I'm the youth leader, uh, youth pastor here at First Baptist Church, and uh, we recently took a uh, trip to Rotan, Honduras. And uh, we'll, you know, the one thing I found out, the parents were more nervous than the kids were. So <laughs> in a way, we should actually have the parents up here to talk about feelings. Uh, but uh, today, we just want to share with you on, uh, you know, why did we go all the way to Rotan, Honduras uh, to do missions, but also that, but the fruits of uh, the work and everything that we got to do there. Uh, before we start, though, I'd like to give you just a, a little fun facts about Roatan. Roatan is the second poorest country, or Honduras is the second poorest country in the, uh, poorest country in, in the Americans. Also too, uh, many people speak English. Unemployment rate is 56% on the island. 50% of people don't have a job. The average income per family is $12 a day is the average income. So uh, that's one reason why we uh, chose Rotan, but of course, you know, thank you to uh, Chris and Brooke. Uh, they have been going there for many, many years. And, uh, you know, first of all, I'd like to thank Chris because uh, I remember about two years ago, he says, do you have a passport? I was like, no, I don't need one. And he goes, get it because we're going to Rotan. I was like, you know, I don't even have to say so. So <laughs> <laughs> it was my choice not to go. I get uh, motion sickness going in the elevator. So I did not want to do anything. But uh, it was eye-opening for me when, I, when we went two years ago to, uh, well, actually a year ago, uh, to scout it out. So, you know, thank you for forcing me. Uh, and I know I can be stubborn at a certain time, but thank you. Uh, so uh, starting here, like I said, I'll just like for the kids to introduce themselves, and then we're going to kind of do just questions and answering. I'm Faith Harrison, and this was my first time out of the country. Um, I'm Marvin Mena, and this is also my first time out of the country. Uh, this is Kidron Flickinger, <laughs> Kid Flick. I've been to Roatan one time before this, but this is like my third time out of the country. My name is Luke Taylor, and this was my first time on a plane and first time out of the country. <laughs> My name is Daniel Diaz, and this was my first time out of the country and first time on a plane. Uh, my name is Kiara Elliott, and this is my first time out of the country, first time out of the on a plane, and me and Luke got to sit together the first times together, so 
My name is Caleb Lara, and this is my first time out of the country. My name is Jacob Martinez, and it's my first time in Roatan. Teresa Lara, and it was my first time out of the country. So, of course, uh, just to start off the conversations, one, uh, a lot of time, first time for y'all to fly, a lot of time, you know, most of y'all first time outside of the country. So what was some of the expectations versus reality? What did you expect going to Roatan or expect to see some of your fears, nerves, and what was the actual reality of it? Um, when we were going to Roatan, I was expecting it to be like just a mess everywhere and people just like running around like just really poor and everything being chaos. But when we first arrived, the first thing I saw was it was just beautiful. Like it was really, really beautiful. And um, it was really nice to look at everything and settle in. But then there was that other half of Roatan that was more poor and that part was pretty extreme, and I didn't think it was gonna be as bad as it was. And that's a one question too, because there, on the hill, you'll see a million dollar home, and then you see people living in the dump. How did that affect you, or? Um, so he said that you see million, like million dollar houses, and then people that live in a dump, but in Honduras, they don't compare. Everybody's equal. And that's, it's like shocking because we don't have that here. Everybody's competing with each other and there. Everybody's equal. No one's going to look at anyone different. Well, first of all, I made the mistake of sitting on the plane over there next to Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> and um, really the whole thing was way up there in my head about how, not necessarily horrible, but maybe how... Um, miserable it might be how hot how sweaty how all that stuff and I was the first one to take a step off the plane and I was like oh, oh. <laughs> it wasn't bad at all and it was like I've seen worse and then that just kind of kept going throughout the entire trip and the thing is is you expect to see this dramatic horrible um heart sinking sights and they are it's I mean seeing kids run into the dump but it's it's normal for them. It's their life. I mean, it's no different from the way we think of how we live life or, I mean, they're just living and they're surviving just like we are, maybe in a different form though. So. I did tell there's going to be bears and tigers running loose, but that's not true. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about the heat because it was hot. I think uh, the heat index was 130 and uh, mm -hmm. you just step out and you just start sweating. Uh, Talk to me about that. How hot was it? Very hot. <laughs> Here, your sweat dries because it's dry heat. But there, since it's so humid, your shirt just soaked. It's like you went and jumped in the ocean. Gotcha. And then, uh, of course, the most important question, safety. Um, how, did you, how safe did you feel? I felt very safe with Dugar. As our um, driver. He seemed like the safest one like, out of all of us. He was like, they're always there protecting us, always telling us, you know, about the whole island and everything. I just felt very safe. Even when he went to the prison ministry and Oh, yeah, I, felt, I still felt very safe. You know, the police were there right next to us while, you know, we were at the prison. Excellent. How about the food? There was no Chick-fil-A's or McDonald's. I'll answer that. <laughs> um, well... Brooke is very good at preparing us for this trip, so thank you, Brooke. So my expectations when I got there, they were exactly what she told me, so I was prepared for every situation. Um, one day we ate <laughs> in one of the villages, and I was just like, Brooke said not to eat here. <laughs> and we did, but it was fine, and everybody was fine, and they were excited to cook for us, so it was a blessing. But the food was very different. It didn't really have taste because they don't flavor, like, season their food. So that was a little bit hard to get used to. But nobody starved, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> they also eat small portions. I, like, I wanted seconds, and seconds never came. Um, <laughs> but um, there's a saying that uh, they have there, and it says, Americans will say, you know, or we'll see, see you tomorrow. And then the locals reply, if God spares my life. What does that mean to you, or when you heard it, uh, what does that mean to you? When we say, see you tomorrow, and then they reply, if God spares my life. Um, it was kind of like a realization, 
most of the time here we'll always say we'll see you later or we'll see you around and like we always think oh yeah we will get to see them later but whenever they said if god uh lets me you just realize like wow i may not have another day like if god chooses to like if it's my time if god chooses it to be then that's it like it's just a realization that you should be like praising him like all the time you won't have a tomorrow tomorrow's not guaranteed uh, we're going to talk about mission work here shortly um we did several things um mission number one is that we got to paint uh, pastor johan he was a pastor that actually was moving to another location and we got to paint his building the mission team before us came and built walls and uh, we got to go paint and then um, on thursday or well, actually wednesday we got to go build a roof for a lady's house um, and then and actually replace the bridge a small little bridge that she had and then we also went to the dump ministry uh, the dump ministry is actually where families will come and as soon as the dump truck and loads the trash all these people will go running to get all the plastic to get all the uh, uh, aluminum to get anything they can get in order to sell it because when they sell it that's what they have for the entire week some of these families bring in about thirty dollars a week by getting all this recycled material and selling it and then we also went to the prison ministry the prison ministry consists of it's really and i use the word prison uh but a jail it was a holding cell on the island if uh, someone is going to be there longer than a week they send them to the mainland but when they put you in the jail they do not feed you the government does not feed you uh, if they are going to eat you better hope that some people outside love you because that's the only way they get to eat is if someone brings them food so we'll go and take a look at the video And smile cause it's been a while it's been like a whole day since I stopped so you could hold me With this child away strong in the faith Lord you are the refuge that I can't wait to get to cause I Seems to rain all my dreams. It's not a big, not a big deal. Let it wash all the bugs off my windshield. Cause you're showing me that in you I'm free. And you're still the refuge that I've just got to get to. So I won't let a day go. Won't let a day go by. So put the drop top down, turn it up. I'm ready to fly. kind of complain a little bit it's hot we're hungry etc and then we did that for two days on monday and tuesday 
And then on, a, I believe it was Tuesday night, I showed Pastor Johan's testimony. And to give you a quick update, Pastor Johan, the pastor at the church, um, he started crack when he was nine years old. Uh, you can see, you know, on his, where he just constantly shoots up. Uh, he was in, uh, in prison and he actually passed away. They wrote a death certificate, signed it. Ten minutes later, a nurse, a doctor comes in and says, let's try one more time. They injected him with three cc's of adrenaline and he popped right up. And we heard his testimony and y'all have seen the testimony. And then um, y'all's feelings changed about the work y'all were doing because y'all didn't know why y'all were doing it. But when y'all had the reason why, y'all wanted to go back. Can any of you tell me why? Or how did his testimony make the difference? It made you want to work harder. I mean, it, you see the reason behind why we were working, and it's oh, it was really changed the mind about you want to go back and just give 100% effort, 110% effort. And why is it hard not to give that 110% effort? Why do we have to have a reason? I mean, we didn't know the reason behind it. We just thought we were painting some church. If you see the reason behind it, you're going to want to work harder. And that was the lesson that I told the kids is even in your everyday life, even if it's painting a wall, you have no clue. That was an answered prayer for Pastor Johan. And if you do your work, your mission work with a full heart, and there's times that we're being used and we don't even know it. We don't even realize it. But doing work for Christ constantly. Um, the second point is that Tish actually said this. Tish said, helping the poor is hard why it's, it seems to be easy you just go help them but why is helping the poor hard and why would Tish say that because you can't help every single person uh, you have to um, be with God and pray with God um, he'll let you know which ones need it the most or which ones need it today instead of um, later on but there's a whole bunch of poor people in this world but if we can help just a few, maybe they can start spreading the gospel to those other poor people. Gotcha. And uh, part of that, too, is um, we actually had this ha happen to us. We were building a roof for the lady. And our driver, Dugar, he had several ladies and several families come up to him and start telling him, I need help. Why aren't you helping me? Why aren't you helping me? Why aren't you helping me? So how do you know, like I said, how do you know who to help and who not to help? Who deserves it? Who doesn't deserve it? I can, I'll answer that one. Um, when we were um, at the end of building her roof, Heather and I were sweeping up her home, and I asked her, like, how do you know who to help? There are so many people here that need help. And she said, well, it's not about who you can help, first of all. It's about coming and loving and sharing the gospel. And then the way we know who to help is because God always provides. And so that really was eye-opening for me. And then the last question, of course, I'm going to direct this to Mr. Jacob. I haven't heard from you yet. <laughs> uh, Jacob, uh, there was a little boy, Samuel, and, uh, you know, we see him in pictures, and, uh, you know, great young boy. Um, I sent, we had to eat on-site, so I sent the kids to the van, which was parked maybe from here across the street. And they went, and uh, they had sandwiches. They were in there eating sandwiches and uh, chips. And then Samuel, with a couple little boys, went in the van, and he started looking at them, you know, like, I'm hungry. I want one. I think he even asked for one, did he not? He even says, can I have one? Um, and we said no. Why did we say no? I mean, how, how tell me what happened, the series of events. Okay, so Samuel, when we come back, Teresa's handing out sandwiches, and Samuel comes in. He gives me a hug, and then he whispers in my ear. He says, um, can I have one of those? And I didn't know what to say. I didn't know, like, yes or no, because Tish told us that we weren't supposed to give food out to anyone. Because if we do, there's a chance, like, if Samuel, if I would have given him the sandwich, there is a chance that Samuel could have gotten, like, attacked by, like, his friend or by, like, an older guy or someone, like, trying to take that food from him. Or like maybe he like gets treated different or something like that. I was just, that was just all going through my head right there, and that's the reason why I didn't give him the sandwich. And it's hard. Mm -hmm. Helping the poor is hard. 
Now, that's one thing that Tish also said that I'll always remember is that we didn't come, as missionaries, we did not come to cause chaos. Uh, yes, we want to help people, but even realizing, you know, like we went to go build a roof and that even caused some chaos. Uh, the neighbors look at her differently because she was blessed. Uh, but we didn't come to leave the place worse than it was. So helping the poor is hard. Uh, one of my favorite parts at Broatan was uh, worship. And, uh, well, I'll, I'll let you see the video and you can kind of see the worship. <laughs> church that we went to we attended three different services and every single time from the first note you felt the presence you felt the spirit uh why is that um i think it was because they were all going to church expecting something they were all there like all for god they weren't there for other people they weren't there for just worship they were there to feel his presence, and I think that's why uh, God showed up as soon as it started. They, they think for, you know, this is something I have written down here, is that people worship God based on who God was and not based on the circumstances. And that's something I took, too, is that we base, you know, we, our relationship with God kind of depends based on our circumstances. There, they praise God for who he was. You can see the living conditions there. And there was, I don't know much about music, but they seemed like seven or eight different types of notes playing in that one song. But it didn't matter because they were singing to Christ. They were singing to God. And then, uh, Luke, I have a question for you, too. Is, um, and I actually looked this up. Uh, according to Christian Today, Christian's family that make less than $20,000 a year, 8% of them give 10% to the church. If you make $20,000 or less, 8% give 10% to the church. When you make $75,000 or more, only 1% give 10% to the church. And with that, you know, Luke, you mentioned we went to church and you noticed 80% of the congregation gave. Uh, yes, sir, they did. That was at Calvary Church on Wednesday night. And in the book of Mark, a woman gave very little and some men gave a lot. Uh, Jesus said the woman had it right because she gave with her heart. And I believe that with those people giving at Calvary Church, uh, the reason that they gave I mean, they don't have any money. A lot of those people we saw, we saw the next day at the dump ministry working. And the reason they gave is because they gave with their heart. They were humble. And as people make more money, their heart closes. So they give little, littler. And I mean, that's why they gave is because they had an open heart and they were giving with their heart. Excellent. Uh, we're going to go and play the uh, travel home video and we're going to end with our last point. Last day, guys. Woo! <laughs> Wee. Last hours. Last hours and then yeah. we're out. Almost yeah, like, out we're Everything is already tanned. Why you look so perfect on your worst days? About to head to the plane. Sad day. our own family one day at a time ten little toes a painted pink good 
fellow man right there. I'm gonna miss him. It's 12.06. We should be home by about a good one. 110, 115. Kira has a huge fear of escalators. Let's go, Kira, go. Hurry, hurry. Oh my gosh. Hurry, Kira. Uh. She is so dramatic. Every escalator she's avoided, but it looks like she didn't avoid this one. There's stairs right there. Oh, my mom's not in the mood to be on camera. <laughs> All right. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Say, ready to see your mom in an hour? Say, hi, mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I am tired of y'all guys, and I don't want to see y'all for a long time. <laughs> 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 Where's your mom? Go give your mom a big hug. I don't know where my mom's at! <laughs> oh, there she is. What did the Rotan mission trip do for you? And we'll start with you, Miss B. Oh my gosh. So, well, I guess one of the main things that it didn't necessarily happen like when we were in Pute Caliente or anything. It happened when we were in our own rooms. It was that last night we were there and um, Marvin, we were having a conversation and he asked me a question and it got me all heated and stuff and I like jumped out of my skin because it was a topic I didn't want to talk about. And so, um, Austin, I just start talking and rambling about it, and um, Daniel actually comes and he goes, I've never heard you talk like that before. <laughs> and so, and, it, and it's really just sunk into me um, this whole week trying to process it, and um, it, it reminds me of um, how many walls and masks I put up, um, especially during worship. Um, just every day walking through and that's really brought a lot down on me and I'm actually able to walk with a little pep in my step and a little pride and um, it's been it's been a time but I'm thankful for just that night um, one thing I really learned was patience I mean when we were over there Rotan we really didn't have a you know anywhere to go other than, you know, to the hotel in which all day we were working. And so I really learned how to build, base, build patience. And here, back here, I've just been, like, totally chill, totally cool, going with, you know, like, just going with the flow with everything. I mean, it's really helped me, you know, be really, really calm at home. Uh, one thing I took from Rotan is... Um, when you're when you see the people there, they're doing the best with what they have, and they don't have much. Um, that the roof that we built, that mom uh, with the family of five, she was doing her best to keep her kids happy. I saw one of her little boys playing with a tooth toothpaste bottle like an action figure while we were there. Um, but she uh, and she couldn't even take her daughter to the hospital until we got there. Um, and she'd been sick for a while. So it's helped me realize that we can do a lot with what we, we have because we have so much. Um, so that just was helpful. I'm gonna kind of touch on what you said. Uh, it really humbled me to see like what we have and what we take for granted. And we take so much for granted when they have so little and they go to church happy, happy to just be there. And we complain about going to church because it takes time out of our day. And it just really shows you what we have compared to them. 
Um, it showed me how blessed I am because here before I went, I was always jealous if I didn't have stuff. And then when I went to Rotan, I noticed that I have everything I ever need. And it showed me that God has really blessed me and I need to give him everything all the time. Uh, Rotan taught me how to have more patience and joy. I didn't realize that when I was there, but when I got back, I realized I'm like, why am I worrying? Why am I in a hurry? God has got me. And I realized in Rotan, they build a bridge that they walk on. And when we were little, we played the floor is lava. Like we would walk on a bridge. And if you fell off, like you fell in the lava. But there, that's real life for them. Like if they, like they have to walk on a bridge or they, because they live in a swamp. And it just, um, when I got back, I realized like how patient I am now and like how patient I wasn't before. And I'm just really grateful for that. Rotan taught me how um, to do everything with the, all you got, 100%, and with a good heart. Because like, when you're there, you see everyone, they're like in horrible conditions, and they're doing God's work with a good heart, smiling, always joyful. And they're really giving. Like I was, remember we went to eat at a restaurant, and the little kids were with us. And we walked out, and like the foods are real small portions of it. And I was like, man, I'm still hungry. And this little kid walking beside me like with holes in his shirt and shorts like don't even fit him, no shoes. And he pulls out limps and he's like, here, you can go get more food, I have money. And like that just shocked me because they don't have a lot of stuff and he was offering to give me money for more food. And like it just realized, made me realize to be more giving and God will provide for us. Um, with me, Rotan taught me that everything is a process with God it's not going to happen in one day. It's, you can't change your life in one week or anything. It, takes, it could take months, years, weeks, however God allows it to be. But God taught, or Rotan taught me that it's a process. Um, two things that it taught me, first of all, um, that his word is living. Um, Matthew 6.25 really came to life for me there when we were working. And it just really made me understand, you know, when he says, why are you worrying? And don't I take care of the birds and the lilies? And they have what they, I mean, they have everything that they need. Um, that just really, really came to life when I was there. And then the second thing that it taught me was joy, joy in the little things, because that's what matters. Um, and then the, it also just, I really appreciate the church and all of y'all for giving us the opportunity to go and um, just get to serve. It just opened our eyes to so much, and I'm very grateful to be a part of a church that allowed us to go. Um, it was I have a heart for missions now, and if Jacob lets me, I want to go live there in the summer and teach kids. <laughs> uh, one person that's missing is uh, Courtney Godinez, but we do have a video uh, that we're going to play. My name is Courtney Godinez, and I'm sorry I was unable to make it today, and I would like to share some experiences that changed my life in Rotan. One of the first experiences I would like to talk about is me being baptized in Rotan. Everything that he has created from the coral reef to the beautiful sparkly water, um, it states in the Bible that we are his greatest creation and it warms my heart to know that God loves me so very much. The last thing I'd like to talk about is how God changed my life. We have so much here that we take for granted and that God gives us and it's a gift. I realized that we need to be thankful for what we have and just appreciate everything he's given us. We went to go build a roof for a lady's house and just seeing how she didn't have anything. She didn't have a kitchen, she had a mattress, she didn't have many things that could help her get through everything that she needed to, but she had blankets, a mattress, she had five kids and to see how happy she was just to live there, just for us to help her out is why. I had a very big experience. Uh, this is something that me as a leader and how I'm over the youth group, I don't want to just do things just to mark them off the list. So anything that we do, I always pray, you know, God use us. Use us, make your presence known, make your presence known to the kids, show up. And this was our, my prayer, and, and through my prayers, I was asking God, you know, we're, I don't want to be just another group going to Roatan. You see that little boy Samuel, he had a group before us. He's going to have a group after us. He's going to have a group next week. He's going to have another group the following week, next year. So how can we be different as a group? God used us in a mighty way. And God just really blew my socks off. 
Because let me tell you, I was trying to, in my mind, human mind being used for the people that needed it, the poor people, the people that don't have much. And in reality, we were there to minister to Tish, who housed us, and her daughter, Heather. If you notice in the video, there's one lady, a, a girl there. You know, and nobody really asked, hey, who's that? She stayed with us basically all week. That is Tish's daughter. And um, very little did I know that God was going to send us there to help them because that week, the husband, Travis, and Eli was a son, went to Tennessee because he's going to start school up there. Heather is being homeschooled in Roatan. So you as a mother is sending your son away. A teenage, same age as them, is being homeschooled and doesn't even go to school. She was bored out of her mind. But she was also in a slump. Tish, who housed us, was in a slump. And then when we got there, somehow we just got, you know, Heather bonded to us. She was there in our Bible study. She went, she didn't have to go help paint, but guess what she did? She went to go paint. And then we were having worship one night, and then uh, Tish was there, and Tish says, you have been an answered prayer because you brought youth camp to my daughter, Heather, which she needed. So one, hats off to them for getting that opportunity and also welcoming as she is one of our own. But then Tish had a breakdown that one night too because as a mother leaving her son, by himself what grade was he in was he a junior senior, senior. i think he's going to be a senior living in tennessee by himself while his whole family's here and we got to minister to both of them the one thing that i've gotten and that i'm taking away is relationships relationships is a key to everything at your job guess your job success is based on what relationships sports based on how well your team has chemistry, relationships. Everything is based on relationships. And this is something that Pastor David, which is the pastor of uh, Pute Calente, said. He goes, I don't, if the work will get done. So if there's kids, go play with the kids. He wasn't worried about building the roof. He says, we will do that. But if there's kids, you go build relationships. And then that's my key, that something that I want to share with you is, how are you building relationships? You see, our mission field, I took the kids all the way clear across to another country, and in the course of the question is, it was about $2,000 per person, and we donated a lot of stuff too. Why not just, you know, they, they earned all the money themselves, but why not just get that money and send it there? Because Jesus was about relationships. Jesus was about the people. And that's my challenge to you is, how can we start building relationships? You see, our, our mission field is here. Our mission field is when you're in line at Walmart, when you're at, you know, McDonald's in line. Your mission field is there. Building relationships is up to you in how you build them. Uh, they also have a sign, saying that says, time is money, is what we say. They say time walks with us. Our main priority was to love and have relationships. The greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Love and relationships. And this is also something that he said was that God did not cause us, call us to be busy. He called us to what? To love. But yet whenever we, wanna, we need help with things, what do we do? We're busy. We don't have time. We have excuses. Where's Cassie at? Cassie, how many volunteers do we have for the Wednesday night kids so far? like three we have three volunteers for Wednesday night this is where you build the relationships this is where you can show love to 40 50 kids on a Wednesday night and I'll challenge you men we have to step up including myself it's not a just a woman's job to go and volunteer in the nursery or volunteer in the kids department uh, in youth we have seven females, adult females that volunteer, and we have three males in the youth. Men, I challenge you. It's time to step up. And the women should be saying, amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord. None <laughs> of you are saying that. I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> Come on, women. Men, is it, 
you have to understand too, you know, like my dad sitting here and one of the greatest memories that I had when I was a child when he used to go out on a dirt basketball court and he used to play basketball with us. Because that's the time whenever I felt most loved. Men, you can make a big impact if you quit being busy and start doing the command that God tells us to do is love. Three kids for 40 to 50 kids is unacceptable. But yet, if nobody volunteers, guess what we're doing? We're accepting it. There are many things we can do, church. And I'm kind of on fire, as you can kind of tell, because Royal 10 really changed me. It's relationships. It's relationships. And I just want to show a, uh, well, I'll, let me end with this too, because this is the last thing that I learned is, I can't remember who said it, but it says, whenever we have our hands open and we're receiving, God gives us, right? And we receive from who? We receive from God. And we keep receiving. But the moment we do what? Okay, this is mine. Can God give us any more? We can't because our hands are closed. So church, I'm, I'm, you know, are our hands open as a church to receive God? Or have we just closed them and the blessings stop? In a third world country, you always hear of miracles and how God moves and how worship is just so powerful. And in my opinion, it's because they have faith. They have to have faith because very little that they have. Why do the poor people give so much? Because they have to have faith and they have to rely on God. But then there's a certain point where we get comfortable and we're just, okay, I'm, I'm fine. We got this. I can make this work. And we stop relying on who? God. So I'd like to end with this video just on some relationships that we were able to cre uh, create during Roatan. And then we'll pray and then we'll be done. My name is James Anthony. I am a missionary with Global Outreach International, partnering with Roatan Missions here on the island doing construction. We were pleased to have you. I enjoy working with a spiritual group like you do, and you have leaders for the church in Hartford. You do have spiritual leaders in your church in the future. Thank you very much, for, and come back soon. Uh, thank you guys for sending uh, Jacob and Teresa and the kids, the youth group from Hartford. We're so blessed. They uh, put a roof on a lady who uh, has been kicked out of a house. Um, she needed a roof. She needed her bridge to walk through her swampy floor to get to her house. They built into her lives the hope of the gospel that God was sending people all the way from Texas to come and love on this one woman. And, it, and it's just given her joy. It, 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 it fans the flame of her heart to follow Jesus in difficulty. So there's a great value in supporting people that are called to mission, giving, praying, being the church. That's what we all have to do. We're all called to it. And, uh, you know, the Bible does say, right, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever should believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But the next verse is vitally important. For God did not send Jesus in the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. That's why God works through people like you and me and through the youth group and those that want to commit to the things of the gospels because God works through people like us to show it's his power and his love and his glory in vessels like these for vessels of honor for God. So God bless you guys and thank you. Okay. It's a pleasure meeting you all. And May the good Lord keep you all in hand and always remember me in prayer. I'll be here when you come back. Hi guys, uh, just want to give or send a shout out to the Hereford youth group that came down and spent some time with us. I just want to tell you guys thank you. We appreciate every single thing you guys do for us. Uh, uh, never think that if you do something minor, it doesn't mean anything because sometimes the littlest of things means the most to people here. Uh, I just want to encourage all the youth and also Pastor uh, Jacob for coming down. I just want to say keep the good work up. There's a lot more to do and God's going to use you guys in ways you probably don't even imagine. Uh, I am currently working with Pastor David as worship pastor and youth pastor in training. Uh, and it's been a, a rocky journey for me. but. But I could never see or picture myself doing something other than using my life and my gifts for the Lord. Thank you guys, and I hope you guys uh, come to Rotan soon. Uh, we're just getting started. Uh, this church has been here. We've been doing this ministry for two years now here on the island. And in reality, all I can say is we're just getting started. We're only about 50 people. And... 
the vision God has given us is to grow, grow beyond numbers, grow beyond just members. God wants us to save. You know how it is, the calling, Matthew 28, 19. It's, it's the grand commission to make disciples of a nation. And um, I'm in love with him. <laughs> That's what keeps me going. That's what wakes me up. That's what brings this team here is, is the love for the Lord and the love for his people. And I hope this small testimony is a blessing to you guys so you can know that God could do miracles in anybody, in all walks of life. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're fat, skinny, bald, long hair. What God is looking for is a heart that's willing to surrender to Him. And that's what He did with me. I hope um, He could do the same with you. God bless you guys. Hi church, I'm Tish Morin and I live in Roatan. And of course, I'm from the Bay Islands. And we have so enjoyed your team this week. Uh, the kids have been amazing. They have been very gracious and have been a big blessing to my teenage daughter who is getting used to having her brother gone to the States now for high school. Um, we just really thank you for sending them down. We also have a ministry that helps with the folks out at the dump and uh, we help with their kids going to school, medical issues. And uh, we were very thankful for your team being able to go with us um, last Thursday love on those folks and just be uh, Christ's hands and feet there. And we're very really grateful that they could do that with us. And um, we hope they come back. We hope to send them back. They have been a true blessing.